മലങ്കര ഓർത്തഡോക്സ് സഭയുടെ കത്തോലിക്കായും മലങ്കര മെത്രോപ്പൊലീത്തയുമായ മാത്യൂസ് തൃതീയൻ ബാവയ്ക്ക് മുംബൈയിൽ സ്വീകരണം ഏപ്രിൽ മൂന്ന് രാവിലെ പതിനൊന്ന് മുപ്പതിന് നവി മുംബൈ വാശി സെന്റ് തോമസ് ഓർത്തഡോക്സ് അരമന പള്ളിയിൽ വെച്ച് നടക്കുന്ന ചടങ്ങിൽ ആരോഗ്യമന്ത്രി വീണ ജോർജ് മുൻ മുഖ്യമന്ത്രി ഉമ്മൻചാണ്ടി തുടങ്ങിയവർ പങ്കെടുക്കുമെന്ന് മലങ്കര ഓർത്തഡോക്സ് സഭയുടെ ബോംബെ ഭദ്രാസനാധിപൻ അഭിവന്ദ്യ ഗീവർഗീസ് മാർ കുറിലോസ് പറഞ്ഞു officially in picture for the past 45 years you know this is a, we are representing a very ancient church uh, which is from the first century uh, saint thomas one of the apostles of jesus christ uh, came down to india and preached the gospel and established churches it's believed that uh, uh, not only in kerala but uh, throughout the country and even up to china uh, there had been establishments initiated by saint thomas but as you may perhaps know during the persian invasion uh, most of the christian presence uh, outside kerala were completely wiped away uh, so only later in the 16th century when the missionaries came uh, the christian presence uh, reappeared in different parts of the country uh, in addition to kerala um, and it has been growing and the original community back in kerala uh, grew up in kerala uh, in harmony with the people hindus and muslims and other uh, religions in a very healthy wealthy manner and uh, we have been addressing the challenges of different kinds and uh, growing in a very effective manner uh, becoming complementary each other there wasn't any tension uh, normally there wasn't any any difference of opinion or worries of uh, any kind uh, but uh, as and when the portuguese came there had been divisions uh, in the uh, in the christian community and then the dutch later the british came and there had been divisions and on a later date because of the protestantism there had been so many denominations as you know but the ancient orthodox church in india has been in the country uh, for all the 20 centuries and uh, we belong to the oriental orthodox churches like uh, um, ethiopia armenia antioch uh, eritrea and so on so from there are uh, among the christians uh, orthodox christians there are two families one is called oriental orthodox church and the other one is byzantine orthodox church we belong to the oriental orthodox churches which are of very ancient background most of them are from the first century uh, the russian orthodox church even though it's a very prominent church today it's only from the 11th century because uh, some of the missionaries from greece when they are in priest the gospel and uh, established churches uh, but it has become a very big church because uh, throughout the uh, soviet union uh, the christian presence has been spread throughout especially in the medieval time um, coming back uh, we have uh, the head of the church uh, has got two titles one is the catholicos Uh, in the orthodox world there are two titles used for the supreme head one is catholicos the other one is patriarch uh, catholicos and patriarch uh, uh, are used according to the the tradition of a particular church india has chosen catholicos as the supreme title uh, of the head of the church uh, or the title of the supreme head of the church so uh, the present catholicos uh is the 92nd successor of saint thomas and uh, he is recently elevated to the to that position only few months now so it's his maiden visit after taking over the responsibility as the uh, head of the church uh, he, uh, his uh, holiness martha basilius martoma matthews the third uh, he was uh, earlier the metropolitan in charge of uh, a diocese called kandanad back in kerala now he has got the responsibility he had been taking very many responsibilities in the church including the secretary being the secretary of the holy synod for a while and uh, many other responsibilities like uh, uh, the the president of the clergy fellowship and also 
wives of the clergy fellowship oh, 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 many many uh, responsibilities including the vice president of the theological seminary which is uh, the ancient theological seminary back in kottayam kerala so uh, since uh, he is coming for the first time we thought of having a, a elaborate uh, uh, session in which he will be uh, welcomed and uh, there will be a public meeting his holiness will be landing on second evening um, because uh, his uh, busy schedule has demanded to stay back in kerala till noon on second and from there he will be taking a flight at 3 uh, something in the afternoon we'll be coming down to to bombay by 5 Uh, and by evening he will be here so we will be having a simple reception during the evening because uh, we would love to see that the majority of the priests and the people will be gathered together on third morning uh, so for we have a given direction uh, to have the holy mass of the holy kurbana on the previous saturday evening so most of the priests will be engaged in it uh, but uh, on sunday morning many people will be uh, coming along with the priests uh, and the people uh, in hundreds and hundreds uh, so that we will be uh, having a very reasonable gathering and after the holy liturgy there will be a, a break for breakfast immediately after that there will be having a meeting which may start at 11:30 uh, uh, there will be a, a video presentation uh, regarding the activities and the witness of the diocese uh, for 20 minutes after which we will be starting the meeting mr uman chandi uh, the former chief minister of kerala and also a prestigious son of the malangar orthodox church will be inaugurating the meeting uh, we are expecting uh, his eminence uh, cardinal but uh, since uh, he is traveling abroad he has and given the consent uh, we are expecting Uh, but uh, it's a sunday so if he has got the prayer appointments may not be that much easy but otherwise uh, we are expecting because he is a very close friend of me personally and uh, has been very actively involved in many of the ecumenical events uh, otherwise uh, the mathama suffragan metropolitan uh, his grace um, uh, right reverend and uh, dr yuakim makurlos uh, who has taken up the responsibility of the uh, bombay diocese recently uh, uh, will be there and uh, bishop uh, thomas elevenal of the sura malabar church will also be there as bishops is uh, veena george uh, who is the uh, the health minister of kerala um, uh, she will be here her husband has been had been our uh, um, lay uh, association secretary so he uh, dr george joseph will also be joining her um, and uh, we are expecting uh, dr uh, shinde uh, ek march ek march shinde uh, the minister uh, of maharashtra rajmichari ിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്റിറ്
So for many years he has been very actively in modern our activities. All the education institutions in Pune is uh, taken care of him. So uh, we uh, thought of giving this prestigious award to him this time. But otherwise, uh, other members, uh, some other members of the Orthodox Church, uh, who are in the uh, public space, like uh, Ebi Kurvula, uh, you know, uh, him. we were expecting um, Shiny Wilson, but unfortunately, she is not at the moment in Bombay. But uh, uh, Miss Mini Philip, Mini Ipe, uh, uh, who is on the top of the LIC. And um, Alice um, Vaidyan, uh, who is uh, one of the key persons in the Air India. And uh, her husband, uh, Mr. Givaris Vaidyan, Dr. Givaris Vaidyan, is also uh, uh, in great responsibility. DMD of Kishwara. He was the DMD of uh, State Bank of India and the advisory board member of uh, Tata Consultancy. So these people will be felicitated during that time. And uh, of course, uh, some of the senior members of uh, the diocese who has been uh, in various activities helping out uh, even from the beginning of, of the diocese. This uh, diocese has got only history of 40, uh, 45 years. Uh, uh, even though the first church uh, here in Dada, St. Mary's, now it's a cathedral, uh, it has been from the 40s uh, of the last century. Uh, but otherwise, uh, many other churches are after that. And uh, uh, this diocese is uh, spread throughout Maharashtra, a portion of Karnataka, uh, Gujarat. This is the 45th year. We thought of having a five-year plan uh, so that uh, towards the Golden Jubilee, we will have a set of programs of various kinds. We have got so many social projects uh, uh, throughout uh, the years, and uh, we are, uh, we have uh, start, uh, recently started a cancer center for the past uh, three years. That center is uh, uh, to, to help out the poor uh, people who are coming from far off places like uh, uh, um, Orissa, Bihar, Jharkhand, and so on literally uh, poor uh, people uh, who are accommodated there. Uh, their uh, uh, accommodation and food and also the transport, uh, transportation uh, to and fro Tata hospital is covered by us. And uh, their uh, um, personal hygienic aspects will also be covered. So that's a center which has been running for the past three years. Uh, some of the activities you are familiar with, I don't want to elaborate uh, because uh, in this school we have got uh, 450 students from the Turbe slum. Uh, uh, they are completely given free ship, including one meal every day. So, uh, so also we have got some activities in Turbe slum because uh, the poor people, uh, young uh, boys, we uh, many years back identified uh, many of the small kids have got TB. So we started giving medicine, but unfortunately uh, they couldn't uh, uh, hold it because of the weakness in the body. Uh, they started omitting. So uh, we inquired about it and came to know that it's purely because of the malnutrition, they couldn't hold the medicine. So they, uh, instead of giving the medicine, which could be uh, uh, covered by some agencies, uh, we started giving uh, some food items like uh, milk, banana, egg, and so on. So for a period, some selected students will be given this, and later another team of people will be substituted when, uh, as and when the first batch will be reasonably good to take up the medicine. So that process is going on. And uh, we have started some uh, providing some stitching machine uh, to the uh, ladies. And uh, that is also on the group. Uh, 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 it's improving. So uh, uh, we are trying our best to see that, that women will also be having some enhancement so that uh, uh, they can have some money uh, by their own effort and uh, the quality and the quantity 
of the women can be improved uh, to have some status in the society. God willing, would love to adopt uh, the Thurbe slum, which has got about uh, uh, one lakh families, 100,000 families are there. Uh, we are in the process of uh, trying for a, a reasonable space uh, so that uh, perhaps uh, we can have a, a school in, the, in that area itself so that uh, majority of the students uh, may be in a position to study. But uh, issues like uh, TB and uh, similar uh, diseases are very prominent there. So we have to address many things, but God willing, we'll be entering into, as a part of our Jubilee celebration, we are looking into whether we can adopt that uh, slum so that various social activities and uh, reformation in terms of uh, their medical care and other things. So for example, uh, you know, for the mm, kidney problems are on the increase, not only the ca ca cancer issues, but uh, once uh, we identify a person as a kidney patient, it's a quite expensive thing. But uh, prevention is better than cure. So uh, we would love to see that uh, there will be some activities uh, for examination at intervals for the patients uh, so that uh, once uh, we identify some weakness in them, and uh, in the early stage, if we can give some medicines, uh, we can uh, prevent them from uh, uh, the uh, lifelong disease. And if uh, somebody has been identified as a uh, kidney patient. Uh, unfortunately, he or she may be the breadwinner and uh, if that person is sick, the whole family will be lost. So we would love to have some prevention in the, in the whole scenario. We would love to have a, um, a mobile uh, labo a laboratory uh, which can examine the patients in different places and uh, uh, yeah, even in the in the base slum on a frequent basis so that uh, we have to encourage the students from this school some of them have uh, volunteered uh, to to serve as volunteers uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, come up as volunteers so i would love to make them so that uh, they know the culture of our activities and uh, they can be uh, very friendly with the families in, in the in the slum. So we have identified some of the students who may be a bridge between our activities and the uh, nourishing or flourishing space. Uh, we have uh, many uh, activities. That is a very ambitious project uh, in our mind uh, because we would love to see uh, that the harmony in the society can be enhanced. You know, from, I landed here in 91 as a young bishop. Uh, in 93 was the riot. So uh, I wanted to feel what is what did happen in the mega city. So I got a special permission from the police and traveled to CST with the uh, official letter from the police because otherwise no vehicle were, were allowed to uh, be uh, on, on the road. So on the way, I could identify some of the places where ashes were there, uh, where people were killed and uh, burned. Uh, so it was a very painful thing. When I came back, I shared uh, with uh, some senior members of our church that uh, we should be very actively involved in uh, consoling and uh, giving some changes. But unfortunately, as you may perhaps know, during that time, South Indians were uh, marginalized during that time. So it was very difficult to appear in the public. So they advised that uh, we can collect uh, food, clothes, money, and can hand over to some NGOs. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, you publicly cannot enter in the space uh, which can be very dangerous. So we did it uh, uh, like that, but uh, then I thought, there should be a space uh, for people to, uh, to, to come irrespective of caste or creed. So Gregorian community, which is uh, planned to be a space where uh, not only Orthodox, not only Christians, but Hindus and Muslims and Jains and uh, all people can come and celebrate their life 
uh, we have got so many uh, activities there. Uh, we would love to, to have small huts where uh, if somebody wants to, if uh, you are coming as a family, uh, one or two persons would love to have a contem uh, contemplative time, they can go to the hut. Otherwise, uh, yoga and other facilities will be provided. Prayers, uh, discussions, debate, seminar and other activities will be there. There will be a road around the property so that you can go for a walk or a spiritual walk or a yoga or a uh, run or a, anything of that sort. Uh, so many activities are there. And then the old, old age home, uh, orphanage, uh, house for the mentally challenged. All the activities are there so that uh, you can switch on from one to the other, spend some time. Uh, you yourself, if you want to spend a little time, say one weekend or a week or few, a few days, uh, you can come and stay there and uh, you can enjoy the nature. It's a beautiful place. Kerala is uh, uh, named as a God's own country, but our property in Roha is better than Kerala with coconut trees, uh, plantations, uh, and a beautiful setting. One side is uh, uh, the river, on the other side is the state highway. So it's a beautifully set uh, space, uh, naturally inclined, uh, with a very, very special, delicious settings and the facilities for uh, plantations, uh, animal husbandry and other things. We are in the process of developing. For the past a few years, we have, been, we have developed to a certain stage. Now, uh, you might have heard about Dr. Shankar um, the, of Habitat Architecture Firm, uh, who is a world-renowned person. Uh, we thought of having him of, uh, as the chief architect of the property, of the um, buildings uh, which are going to be erected there. Uh, of few reasons. The one thing is that uh, he's an architect uh, who is interested in uh, uh, enjoying and uh, felicitating the nature at the most and utilizing the local materials for the building. Uh, and it will be akin to the nature and the beauty of the city. And uh, what he has promised is that uh, there will be natural air and oxygen and also natural light to all the buildings and all the rooms which are he constructs. And uh, certainly it will be economically viable buildings. So all these things have, uh, have been taken uh, into consideration. Uh, we have asked him to serve two times that he had been. So well, one of the buildings will be a four-story building. The two stories uh, will be mainly for the gathering of the mentally challenged kids and their classrooms, uh, teachers' facilities, and other things. The second floor will be for uh, uh, old people who, uh, who would love to come and stay there, uh, with a, um, a dormitory for girls, so that they can also help the old people uh, at their needs. The third floor uh, will be uh, for the monks uh, who will be staying there, so uh, with uh, a dormitory for the boys so that uh, um, boys in, in the building can also be the volunteers for various activities. would love to develop uh, various kinds of conference, seminar, programs and other kinds. So that the, we would love to beautify the whole uh, area so that uh, uh, schools, institutions, churches and uh, uh, temples or mosques uh, will be attracted to that spot for weekend programs. Uh, 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 various activities can be arranged. There is a school which has got a capacity of 1100 students. Uh, it's a CBSE uh, school which has got a fairly good uh, ground. So uh, we are developing uh, the tracks, uh, sports tracks and other things so that it will come up uh, to a higher level of at least the national uh, uh, events can be conducted there in the future. You haven't got the money at the moment, uh, so it may be it may not be uh, the priority of the time, but uh, God willing, that will also be 
uh, uh, under consideration. So I would love to encourage people in various activities. The, uh, the latest uh, program we have uh, launched is a center for the street children. Uh, in Kalambali, we have completed a three-story building. It's, uh, we are just uh, waiting for the final approval from the department. Uh, otherwise, we would have started by this time. Uh, we thought of uh, having uh, a space for the uh, street children. First, uh, we may be uh, giving a priority to the boys. So, uh, uh, once they are given some activities and engagement of various kinds and uh, some basic training or some equipment, uh, uh, some uh, some job oriented skill so that uh, they can uh, be proud of their, uh, their own skill and talents and they can be uh, breadwinners or uh, we can achieve many things. Uh, I'm very happy that uh, the students are here in this school uh, who are from the Islam. Uh, they have come up uh, to very high levels. Uh, some of them are doing their CA, uh, some are uh, doing nurses. One has applied for uh, uh, in the flight, uh, what do you call it? Uh, air hostess position. So uh, different levels that they have come up and uh, uh, their performance uh, are superb. One of the, uh, the former students uh, uh, from our slum, because uh, many years back uh, when we decided father went to the slum and uh, you know, was in the process of selecting uh, children with, uh, in the age group of three and a half and five. But there was a senior boy who was completely blind, but uh, he was very much longing uh, to study. So he was hunting after uh, father and requested, pleaded uh, that uh, he may be considered. So father gave me a call and said, uh, here is a blind boy. I was not sure how he can be trained. So when, uh, then uh, father said, uh, with the braille system, uh, we will manage, uh, provided bishop agrees with it. With it. So I said, uh, go ahead. Uh, that shaker, you won't believe. He's a postgraduate now. Uh, three, uh, four years back when he came here, uh, I asked Shekhar, uh, what is your ambition? Sir, I would love to become a, a postgraduate and I uh, would love to become a professor. So I asked him, why can't you apply, uh, try for IAS? He said, I would have done it, but unfortunately because of my blindness, I cannot serve the society as it is expected of. So, but uh, this I can uh, be confident that I can teach uh, the students. So he's a postgraduate and uh, now employed. Mm, uh, so such events, uh, our school uh, could help them out. And uh, the annual events are of supreme importance for them because uh, they get the stage, they have got colorful uh, dresses and uh, their performance are super amazing. Uh, in one of the uh, anniversaries, uh, uh, the then Cardinal was uh, our chief guest. During the performance, uh, he uh, applauded and uh, asked how Archbishop you can bring them uh, to this level because such a wonderful performance on the stage. If they have got beautiful co costumes and encouragement from the teachers, including the principal, uh, they can be very colorful, uh, I don't record. So this is a very uh, uh, wonderful space of great enthusiasm and encouragement because uh, we see the graph of their transition and uh, changes uh, and they feel proud of for the whole thing. So these are some of the, uh, the things. So not only uh, for this uh, press conference and your presentation uh, tomorrow or the next two few days. Uh, uh, not only for the, uh, during the event in which you are invited, uh, but uh, you can be a part of it because would love to see that any person under the sun 
can be a part of the Gregorian community and that kind of program. So you would love to have a change. Uh, some people might be frustrated, uh, ten, over tensed, having tension and worries. So this kind of people can also be uh, brought there. We would love to develop uh, a monastic community for both male and female. When His Holiness comes, uh, on fifth morning, he will be uh, traveling to Roja. Fourth. Sorry, fourth. Fourth. Uh, and uh, he'll be spending the time there. Uh, we'll be having the blessing of the uh, new build, uh, for foundation stone of the new building. And there will be a, an oath of ten people who will be in the monastic uh, commitment. So that will be there. Uh, and uh, His Holiness will be visiting all the activities, including that of the uh, the uh, spiritual children uh, who is there in the, in the campus and elderly people. Okay. Uh, His Holiness will be arriving on uh, second evening, and the third year, uh, the, the third is the most important events, uh, the uh, the holy puja, the main uh, liturgy. Uh, which uh, we call it uh, Holy Kurbana uh, or Holy Mass. That will be in the morning on 3rd, uh, which will start at uh, 7 uh, uh, a.m., 7.30 a.m. And it will be through 11. Then there will be a uh, break, um, break for the breakfast. And 11.30 will be having the public meeting. In the public meeting, um, uh, there will be a, a galaxy of people who will be who are invited as VIPs. Uh, so, so, for example, um, uh, Mr. Uman Chandi, former Chief Minister of, uh, of Kerala, and a very uh, top leader of the uh, Congress Party, who is a member of the Malangara Orthodox Church, will be now uh, inaugurating the public meeting. Uh, Ms. Veena George, uh, who is the health minister in Kerala, who is also a member of our church, will be felicitating uh, the, the uh, occasion. Uh, minister Ekna Shinde, Rajin Vijayar MP, Vijayan Nate, then uh, Sri Ganesh Nai, Srimadhi Mandamatri, all these people are uh, coming. Also, our local corporates, Avinash Lad, Kishore Padkar, and uh, Vaibhav Gaikwa. Other bishops will also be there. We are expecting Cardinal uh, Cardinal Gracious. Unfortunately, he is uh, away from the city these days, uh, so confirmation is not at there. But uh, in uh, uh, if uh, he is available in any way, he will also be blessing the occasion. Otherwise, uh, Right Reverend uh, Doctor Yuakim Mar Kurilos of the Matama. Safarga Metropolitan, who is also in charge of the Bombay Diocese of the Mathama Church, will be here. And also um, Bishop Thomas Ilevenal of the Sura Malabar Church will also bless the occasion.